Listen up, enough of this rolling. Let's get started coding these sphero balls and not just making cool animations on the meter. You've already done some coding, now we're going to do some more. We'll be using these Surface Go computers for this. You've already gotten used to firing them up and logging them into the Sphero EDU app, so we should be good with that now. You log in like I done showed you when we rolled these varmints all over the room. If you don't sign in, any coding you do will not be there next time you open the app. After signing in, pick Programs from the menu bar. Then, the plus Create from the drop-down list. If you're continuing to work on an existing program, you would select My Programs. Now, we're ready to stop driving and start programming. You'll give your program a name, not untitled. Click on the type of program you want to make. Hint, pick blocks. Click on the robot you use. Uh, choose Bolt, since that's what you'll be programming in our first ICR course. Then, just click on Create to start a new program. Here's where the work gets going. Sphero uses block-based coding just like Scratch. Or maybe it looks a lot like Scratch because it's an adaptation of Scratch block uh, coding system. Each single step or operation is known as an instruction. All of them taken together to accomplish your task are called a program. So, phrases are a little different from Scratch, but otherwise they're a lot alike. Kind of like calling a skunk a polecat. Speaking of cats, there ain't no cat in this coding, so goodbye Scratchy. Let's get started. You don't actually need to have a Sphero Bolt attached in order to start coding a program for them. So you can get started without them. Okay, so here we are. We have got our Sphero EDU app going and we're going to create a program. So go up here and pick Programs. We'll click Create a Program. We'll call this a out in Back, run, I'm going to do blocks, sphere bolt, and create. So here it loads as a fresh canvas, and here's our blocks. Now what we have here is it looks a lot like uh, Scratch because it's based on Scratch. We have our movements blocks. You can roll things, calibrate compass, we have lights. We can make the back LED one color, front LED another. We can set our matrix animation. Maybe we can set like main screen, main LED like that. We can pick that and we can pick a color. Let's say we want to make it green. And if we want to change one of the settings, you can change the settings, but it's only 0 to 255. I'm not sure why it's only 0 to 255. Maybe you know why it's 0 to 255. Think on that a minute. Uh, then we have sounds. It can play a random sound and it can speak something. Uh, when it does that, it speaks it through your computer. It's the, the thing's in a little plastic ball. You're not going to hear anything through the ball. Uh, it sends the sound to your computer. Uh, then we have the controls block. And controls blocks uh, for delaying action, ending the program. You have your loops. You have your if-then statements. Then we have operators. That's where all your math is done. You can pick random numbers and uh, you can change colors a little bit with the math too. You can build strings, uh, concatenate as they might like to say. Uh, then we have our comparators. That's your less than, equal than, those things. You have your booleans, your ands, and your ors. Uh, and also determining what kind of robot you're working with. Then we have sensors. And a lot of sensors on there. You have your accelerometer, your pitch, uh, your gyroscope, velocity, that's your speed, of course, uh, where they've moved on the location, the distance. Uh, you can sense light. You can sense how much time has passed. You can tell about the compass direction, luminosity. That's how much light is being measured. A last message received. These can communicate uh, to each other and communicate, uh, get uh, messages. Uh, that's the next one is communications. We'll click on that. Uh, you broadcast, that's what channels you want to send a message out. Following is your listening to channels. Uh, stop broadcast, stop follow means quit doing that. Evade, if you evade a channel, basically if a sphero is uh, sending a signal out, you're basically running away from that one. Uh, then you have events uh, on collision, let's try not to use that one. On landing, on free fall, on gyromax, 
when you're charging, when you're not charging, when you get a particular message received, you can have it uh, respond based off that. Then we have variables. Variables come in right handy. Uh, you create a variable, and then you also have functions where you can uh, create your own subroutines. That's like uh, the my blocks in uh, the Sphero. I program the roll of the Sphero out and uh, then roll it back. Uh, so we'll grab us a roll block from the movements palette. We'll drag it up here. Uh, zero degrees is straight out, you'll recall, from where we go. We'll set the speed at 150. That's good, and we'll roll it for a time of two seconds. And we could drag another block up here, but a short way of doing things is to right click on it and choose duplicate from the list. Click duplicate, there it is there. And you'll recall that zero degrees is hanging away from you and 180 is coming right back at you. And so we'll send it out at zero degrees and we'll bring it back at 180. So let's uh, go and see what happens. And off it goes. Ooh, my goodness. Well, that took kind of a strange path there. Uh, it kind of came back in a circular direction there. So uh, let's stop that program. And let's do this. Let's try uh, putting a stop once it gets out there. Just slide a stop in there. And then we'll put a uh, go to controls. We'll put a little delay in just to get slow down some for one second. See if that helps break some of that inertia and momentum that we had there. Pick it up, put it back. We'll aim that rascal course. A couple of clicks here, a couple of clicks there. There we go. Got it all nice and aimed. And now it's going to roll out, stop, and wait a second before it comes back. We'll see if that helps straighten out the path some. Oh, that's much better, much better path. And you can actually see how it did by looking at the sensor data. So we can see it scrolled out like that and came kind of back like that, although I don't know that it really came back further than it went. Uh, so let's uh, try something else. Uh, let's uh, try doing this. Let's change it from uh, going at one second for 100, two seconds for 150. Let's have it go at 50 speed. But remember, distance is rate times time. And so having six seconds at 50 speed should be the same equivalent to rolling at one, two seconds at 150 speed. So we'll do that. Six seconds. Let's see what we get there. Containment. Aim that there. Oh, it's already aimed nicely. Okay, we'll have to change that. And we'll see what we get out of it by going this way, slowing it down some. So now it's slowing down, not quite as fast, very deliberate in its path. Goes straight out, stops, turns around. Boy, it came back almost exactly where it started from. Uh, so that tended to work pretty good, slowing it down some. Uh, slowing it down will reduce the momentum and inertia it has when it gets out there at the far end, so it doesn't keep going. And uh, it's far more accurate when it's going slow there. Now let's uh, try this thing. Instead of going 180 degrees, let's try and not have it spin out there. And uh, we will keep the heading at zero. But we'll make the speed negative 50. Now generally in a car we don't go negative, that'd be like going reverse. So we'll go negative 50. Thing there. And this time when it gets out there, it won't have to spin when it gets to the far end. And we'll uh, aim this thing real quick. Oh, just a teeny adjustment will do it. There we go. Let's see what we get this time. See if uh, not having to spin when it gets to the end makes it even more accurate. So here we go. And it's rolling out nice and easy. Now notice it does not spin when it gets to the end. It just starts rolling back the other way. 
Oddly enough, it rolled back a little farther than it went the other way. Okay. Now let's uh, do this. Let's try to have it roll a square. So what we'll do is uh, we'll keep our stop and delay in there. And let's uh, drag this to the garbage. Get rid of one, you take it down, and make sure it lights up the red part down at the bottom there to get rid of it. And uh, we'll make it roll a square. We will duplicate this section of blocks. So now we've got all three of these. So we're going to roll out at zero degrees. Then we're going to roll at 90 degrees to make a square. I'll duplicate this block. And So that'll be the part that comes back down. Duplicate this block. And they go 270. So what it will do is it will go straight out for one leg of the square, then turn right for one leg, then turn back at us for one leg, and then try and go back to the starting point. And this will probably be a Good time to drag in our exit program and see what we get. In two seconds that away. And it's fairly close to uh, where we started out at, uh, but not a super efficient way to do it. Uh, so let's uh, do this. We have got, in doing this, we have one, two, three blocks repeated four times. Uh, and as you know, a good way to do your program is that if you're repeating stuff, you need to use like a loop. And this is no exception. Let's see if we go to controls. We should have some loops. Oh, here we go. Uh, we'll loop. We'll pull out a loop four times. And we'll get rid of the bulk of our program. Maybe we'll keep that exit. Eh, you say. If you guys can go, and we'll say loop on four times. And we'll pull this part of the code and put it in there. Put the exit there. And it looks pretty good, except all we have in here is roll zero degrees. Uh, so this is where a variable would come in handy. So let's go grab a variable, and we will create a variable. We'll call it uh, my direction. And with these zeros, you can have variables that are strings, numbers, booleans, or colors. This will be a number. And we'll start at zero, which is good. And so now you see my directions over here. We'll take a set. We'll set my direction at zero. Then we'll roll this in here. We'll do my direction. We'll have it roll my direction. And what we want to do is each time it goes through the loop, we want to add 90 degrees to it. So after it's done its uh, roll and stop and delay, we're going to add, set my direction to, we'll go to operators, be my direction plus 90. So we'll go over and grab the operator here, drag that in, go back to variables, my direction. Come on, come with me, my direction. There you go. Make sure it lights up the right spot. My direction plus 90. So the first time it hits the loop, it's going to uh, roll at 0 because we set 0 there. And then I'll change it to 90. We should get uh, 4 rolls out of this thing here. And if you'll notice, the program is a lot shorter than when we had 4 of the rolls all by itself. Uh, so loops continue to do uh, fun things for us. Uh, let's do one other thing. Let's do something that uh, when it's done doing the, uh, the loop here, that we'll have it flash something on the screen. Done. So I've gone and uh, added a little more code to my program. We've created this if then block down here. Looks like this. And what it's going to do is when my direction is equal to 360, it will show red on the screen uh, for just about a second or two. If it does not show that, then we've got a little smiley face that's going to play. Uh, so let's go ahead, and I've already got it aimed up. Let's hit uh, start and see what it looks like. Oh, 
Oh, there we go. Nice little run. We've got a uh, different program here we're going to try out here. And uh, what we've done is we've taken our original program, pulled everything out. We got a loop forever. We're just changing lights. And what we're going to do is we're going to run this. And uh, you're not going to do it in my classroom because I'm afraid you'll break it. Uh, but this is mine I own, so if I break it, I already own it. I'm going to try throwing it up in the air some. Maybe land it land on the soft pillow. Now yeah, that's enough. Uh, we're going to go over here to the menu here. We're going to pick sensor data. And we pick sensor data. We can see uh, the locations all over the place. We want to look at the accelerometer. Now accelerometer, it measures uh, the X, which is your left to right acceleration. And we'll turn the other guys off here. Uh, which is not much left to right there. Uh, we measure the Y which is your forward to back. Not a whole lot of motion there. Uh, but your Z is your up and down motion. Uh, basically your gravity. You can see it has uh, gone up here and then when I gave it a nice toss there, it went up there and then back down here. Then it landed on the pillow. We had some negative G's there. And it measures them from positive 8 G's to negative 8 G's. Uh, last thing I want to show you here is uh, you can program these in JavaScript. Uh, JavaScript code for this one would look like this. Come over here, open it up. Uh, so we created a variable called my direction in our last program. It's still hanging out there. Uh, we have the async function and we have these uh, commands in here. Let's see. In all the JavaScript ones, they end with semicolons. They have brackets and all that. But when you're programming in JavaScript, you have to be, uh, in really any other text-based language, you have to be real careful about the syntax. And the syntax is rules that specify how instructions, variables, and functions are to be used in developing the programs or computer code. So uh, we'll do some more JavaScript later on, but we'll start on doing some block-based programming uh, pretty much right now. Well, that was fun. Now don't forget this handy little undo button down here. And when you're ready to return to the main screen, click on this little back button. If you don't log out for yourself, someone else most surely will, and they may or may not entertain themselves by deleting a few programs before they do, or just mangling them. But rest assured, nobody is going to fix your broken code for you and then log you out. So, that's our quick course on how to program a Sphero Bolt. The end. Hey, thanks for watching. See you around.